What is up guys, it is Nisho here. So today we got ourselves another deck profile. And um, honestly, it's uh, something that's uh, gonna come in uh, next week's set of uh, Battles of Legends Light Revenge, or this week if you consider Sunday the first day of the week. Uh, so um, what it is, it's uh, pretty much an OCG deck list of uh, what Time Lords uh, should look like. And um, this is like pure Time Lord. It's not like mix of anything. It's not like you use as like an engine, but rather the main force of the deck. So starting off, we have three Time Maiden. So Time Maiden is when she's, uh, when you control no monsters, you can special summon them from your hand. And when uh, you contribute her to search a Time Lord. And you can banish her from the graveyard to special summon uh, a Time Lord from your deck, ignoring a summon condition. So, uh, I might have gotten that backwards. Uh, but yeah, I mean, still, it's uh, she's still pretty good. Um, she's just a level one searcher that pretty much just uh, gets you all your combo pieces, or all the, not combo pieces, but the, the, the Time Lords that you need um, when you need them. So, uh, the first Time Lord that we go into is Meta Ion. And uh, he's the one that um, kind of gets rid of all the monsters on board. So, uh, you know, Time Lords can't be destroyed by battle by card effects. And you take no battle damage. And so what they do is um, pretty much they're just zero attack monsters that you can summon out when you have no monsters. So if you use your Time Maiden and Tributor for her effect, you can then summon out your Time Lords. And so your, what your Time Lords do, uh, you know, as you know, I said, you know, they're pretty much just big boss monsters that can't be touched. So they pretty much just stay on the board. For a turn because they have to go back during your next standby phase um even if they're face down so just just remember that um and uh pretty much they just uh they just help a certain uh like they help you get out of certain situations like if you're if your opponent has a full board and you something out your meta ion you you attack your opponent takes uh damage and then pretty much you just go back um like all their monsters get shuffled back and they take a little damage and then during your standby phase meta iron goes back so it's it's pretty fair um it's not anything too broken but you know the thing that about this deck is that this deck doesn't really have a lot of strong attackers like inside the actual deck like what you're gonna have to find a way to do is you're gonna have to find a way to either make rank tens you're gonna have to find a way to either make um you know uh like the, the kaiju over there and, uh, you know, I, you can even see this deck list. We're playing the Supreme Kings, and those are good for, um, you know, uh, exceed summoning. So, uh, it's it's definitely um, it's definitely going to be a, a wild ride with this deck, because um, it's, it's not, you're, you're probably not always going to win the same way, you know. So, next we have uh, the Water one. I forgot her name. I think it's Zafion. And uh, she is actually another good one, which is why she's also three of... And um, what she does is that instead of shuffling all monsters back, like uh, Meta Ion, which is the one we already have, uh, she's, she sh shuffles back all your opponent's spell and trap cards into the deck. Not yours, but only your opponent's. So she's actually pretty good. Um, so the next one is the Earth one. The Earth one, if I remember correctly, he, he lets you shuffle back a card from your opponent's field or um, hand into back into the deck at the end of the battle phase. So all these... Um, um, time Lord effects, they activate at the end of the battle phase, so they're, they're pretty much just okay, you know, it's, it's not anything too groundbreaking, but, um, you know, like, it's like, gradually, you can, you can start to see, like, why this deck can actually do something, and so, he is definitely one of those cards that is, is more of just okay, you know, you have Meta Ion, you have Zafion, uh, the, like, those two are more, um, those two are more solid choices for like getting rid of boards. Like he's he's more he's there just in case you know maybe if there's like a problem monster or something maybe you know um, I don't, I don't know actually <laughs> because usually Meta Iron would would probably just shuffle it back anyway. So he's he's just there just in case you know you, you don't have access to Do two or those two or you you've already used those two or you know he's just a Time Lord in case you already searched out all your Meta Ions and Zafions you just have him also. So the Fire one the second Fire one. Uh, I forgot his name as well. It's um, I'm gonna leave like uh, the effect in like like in text in the actual video, so you guys will actually know his name and his effect um, as I'm talking about him. But pretty much, if I remember what he does correctly, he uh, he he makes your opponent take damage every time they draw for their normal draw phase. So like you could slowly chip away their life points while you know he also can't be destroyed by battle and you know. Um, 
Okay, be shot by card effects as well. So these monsters, these time lords, are just going to be sitting on your board, while uh, you're, um, you're you're pretty much just uh, stalling your opponent. Well, not really stalling, but trying to control your opponent. You know, as as well as stalling, and um, it, it it actually works out pretty fine simply because of their uh, inability to be destroyed. And the last one, the wind one, uh, what he does is that uh, at the end of the battle phase, if your if your life points are less than four thousand, he makes your life points four thousand. So, um, yeah, he he he's just there, you know, just a one of, just in case you know you need life points back or something. You can kind of like a life stream dragon, just make your life points four thousand. <laughs> it's real simple. So yeah, those are the time lord part of the deck. Um, and you know you, you you probably see a lot more stuff going on in the spell and chop card uh, part of the deck, so we'll definitely get into that later and why and why certain cards are there. But um, next off we have uh, the Supreme King cards um, and the Supreme logo. <laughs> I know the Supreme logo is like a meme or something, but um, yeah, uh, the Supreme King the Supreme King cards are actually pretty good. Uh, since they're a generic scale, which um, the dragon can actually search, and the dragon can summon himself from the graveyard as well. And you're like, Nistro, he's a pendulum monster. Like, how, how would he summon himself from a graveyard? And so that's why you play your uh, Foolish Burial and your Dragon Shrine. So it definitely works out. So, yeah, uh, that's pretty much what the, the small one does. And the small one, he's a scale 5, right? And so on the scale... What, what he does is that uh, you can actually put another Supreme King card from your deck uh, onto onto the other scale. So um, what you would do, since all your Time Lords level 10, you would put the scale 13 one um, into the extra deck. I mean, not extra deck, the Pendulum Zone. And so you'd have two um, Supreme Kings in the Pendulum Zone, one, one level 5, one level 13. Just be careful, because when you use that effect, but uh, for only that turn, you can only Pendulum Summon um, d uh, Dark Monsters. So uh, just just be wary about that. And uh, lastly, we have um, Supreme King Gate Zero. So uh, the, the rank 13 one is Infinity. He doesn't really do anything, and Zero isn't really going to do anything as well, but he's a scale zero, so um, he, he helps. You know, <laughs> If you ever need to... Uh, play a deck where you have level ones and you need to pendulum summon. Uh, you could play a Supreme King Gate Zero, you know. So next we have a level ten Kaiju, um, being level ten, so that you know if you ever need to pendulum summon, you can use him, and you know use him for an Exceed summon, or you, you use him as a thirty three hundred body, or you can <laughs> use him on your opponent's monster to tribute their monster, and then um, you know, use something like Meta Ion. Or something like that, just to uh, you know, uh, bring him back into the the deck, so you can use him again. So definitely not a bad idea. Uh, next, we have the, the Cyber Angel. Uh, I'm not entirely sure which one it is. I'll, I'll leave the you know, as I said before, you know, you're gonna see the, the name and stuff like on the screen as I'm talking. But I'm not entirely sure what she does. I know that when she's special summoned, she. Um, she d she destroys all special summon monsters your opponent controls from the extra deck, and uh, that's really all she does. She she's just there just to do that and be a level. It's a level. Uh, level ten. Oh my god, I I can't believe she she's there just as a level ten ritual, and uh, you know you see us playing the ritual sanctuary and the cyber engine ritual spell, which I'll also get more into. Uh, so. Ritual Sanctuary. Now, this is kind of one of the combo pieces of the deck, and you kind of want you, you might wonder why, because you know we all know what Ritual Sanctuary does. Like when it's activated, uh, you can drop uh, well not when it's activated once per turn you can drop a spell card to um, from from your hand and search a ritual or a ritual spell card. That effect won't be too relevant, believe it or not. So what we're using Ritual Sanctuary for is the fact that um, you can actually shuffle spell cards from your graveyard back into your deck to um, to, uh, to, br to bring back a, a light fairy type monster from your graveyard to your hand once per turn. So we have Time Maiden. Time Maiden is a level one light fairy monster. 
And so what you would do is that you would loop um, dropping spell cards and then shuffling those spell cards back and getting Time Maiden back to your hand. So Time Maiden, Special Summon herself when you control no monsters, tribute yourself to Search of Time Lord, and then bring herself back with Ritual Sanctuary. And it's just, you just keep doing that until, you know, as, as long as you want, pretty much, because that, that's pretty much uh, what's going to happen in a duel. So that's why we're playing three terraforming. We want to get Ritual Sanctuary as soon as possible. We also want to see Time Maiden as soon as possible because Time Maiden is pretty damn good. And next we go into the Cyber Angel Ritual. So the reason why we play it like in general is because you can actually use monsters from your Grey Raid. You can shuffle them back. I'm not sure if it's banished or shuffle them back. Uh, you'll see it on the screen. But pretty much you can use the Time Lord monsters and the Kaiju in your graveyard to Ritual Summon uh, the level 10. So you won't actually have to use monsters from your hand, and you won't really be losing any resources. You'll just be using the ritual spell, uh, interaction in the graveyard, and then summon out the level 10 Cyber Angel Ritual. And then if your opponent has any extra deck monsters, they're all gone. So, um, yeah, it's, it's it's just pretty convenient interaction that you get to use monsters from the grave. And they do match up to the level exactly, because, you know, she's level 10. Uh, next we have double dragon shrine dragon shrine is just to mill your supreme king um dragon that's that's really it so um if you mill him you get and you control no monsters you can special summon him so you know the suggested play would be if you have time maiden summon out time maiden first tribute her search a time lord and then use dragon shrine to drop the supreme king and then when the supreme king's in the graveyard you would special summon him back and then uh you would search one of your uh rituals I know, I said rituals. Uh, pendulum scales. So that you can set up a pendulum scale as soon as possible. And then when he gets destroyed, um, the, uh, you know, he's going to go into the pendu uh, the extra deck, the face up in the extra deck. And, you know, every time you pendulum summon him back, uh, you can search another copy of him. So um, that's actually pretty useful. So next we have two contract with Exodia. Now, this is the crazy combo that when I saw, I was like, you know, this is why the Japanese are way more innovative than we are. Uh, so, you know, if you didn't know already, I got this from a Card Kingdom video, right? It's 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 a guy, it's a bunch of Japanese guys who play, like, every uh, card game, like Magic, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't know about Magic, but they play Pokemon, Vanguard, and I've seen a few others. But, um, yeah, and so pretty much, you know, this is, like, a, 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 an OCG deck list. And so, you know, it, it was really crazy of me to really, like, think, like, that this is like, <laughs> it, it's, it was real exciting for me. Like, uh, I'm, I'm at a loss of words now. So pretty much, so you play Contract with Exodia because you play Obliterate. Now what Obliterate does is that uh, you can mill an Exodia card, a, an Exodia or a, forbidden, or a Forbidden One card to send a monster your opponent controls back to the hand once per turn. Now, you mill Contract with Exodia, you get to send a uh, monster your opponent controls back into their hand, right? So if it's an extra deck monster, it goes back into the extra deck, right? It targets, but it's a spell card in the graveyard. And you know what we do with spell cards in the graveyard? We shuffle them back into the deck with Ritual Sanctuary to get back our Time Maiden. So now our Time Maiden is can actually be infinitely looped simply because of the Obliterate, Contract with Exodia, and Ritual, Angel, Ritual Sanctuary strategy. So all you, all you really need is just one Obliterate, and, you know, even if you draw Contact with Exodia beforehand, like before you draw Obliterate, you can just drop it with Ritual Sanctuary to search a Ritual Spell card or the, uh, the Cyber Angel Ritual Monster. So it's just so convenient, and uh, it just all works out together. So, you know, uh, again, you know, so you use Obliterate, you drop Contract with Exodia, and it's a quick effect, so you can do it during your opponent's turn to mess up their plays. You send monsters they control back into their hand, and then during your turn, you use Ritual Sanctuary to shuffle back that Contract with Exodia to add back your Time Maiden from the graveyard. And Time Maiden can special summon herself to tribute herself to search a, a Time Lord monster. So you have a consistent engine of Time Lords. And by that time, you know, by, by a few turns, you probably set up a scale. So it, it wouldn't be to a point where you're just normal summoning them without tributing by their own effects. You would be um, pendulum summoning them like three, four of them at a time. 
and you would exceed some in, you could link some in, you could do all this crazy stuff. You just keep them on the board and keep them just as attackers. So, you know, it, it could be a lot of damage that's, that's going on board. So this, so this loop is actually pretty crazy and it's probably the reason why I like the deck so much. So next we have one chicken game, you know, this is the OCG uh, chicken game is, I, I love it, but it's not a card that the CCG wants around. I think it was amazing in Ignites, but that was all the way back in like what, like uh, 2015. <laughs> so yeah, uh, time's pass. Uh, next we have one for one, just to bring on Time Maiden, you know. And Foolish Burial, you can use it on your Supreme King uh, Pendulum or your Time Maiden as well. Either way, it works. And lastly, we have Harpy's Fetter Duster. I already explained the Obliterate. Um, that's really all it's there for. And uh, Extra Deck is just 7 Sins, uh, the Cannon. You can run um, the other Train Exceed as well. But um, this guy, the Cannon's way better. He inflicts 2,000 damage. So if you're burning out your opponent slowly, um, he just helps with that. And seven sins, like um, he can just banish your opponent's entire uh, monster, <laughs> uh, entire front row, and then attach one of those monsters to him. And then he can also like save himself from being destroyed. So he just has a lot of use. Uh, Deco Talker, Gaia Saber, those are just there because they're link monsters. Um, number forty-one is an amazing card. I ha I haven't gotten a chance to talk about it recently, but I'll do a video about that. Um, Minerva. Utopia and Utopia to Lightning. Obviously, you can run more rank fours, but you know the only monsters you're going to be using for it are, is the Supreme King. So you're only going to go into one or two rank fours per game, if any. You could probably play Tornado Dragon or Castell. Um, and you know, I already told you you could also use the Train Rank Ten. Link monsters probably won't matter as much, but uh, if you want, you know, you can still use more of them. But you know, this this deck is pretty simple, pretty crazy. Um, I'll link the duel video because they actually did like this, this. Like this is actually a screenshot from a duel video that they that they did of this versus like BES or something, and it's actually a pretty fun uh, duel to watch. Uh, you get to see this this deck's combos in action, and uh, which it's pretty much what the basis of this of my video is. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much what Time Lords are. Uh, if you, if you enjoyed, you know, just leave a like. Go to Card Kingdom. You can subscribe to them. I don't really care if you subscribe to me. I don't really get <laughs> that many views anyway. But um, yeah, still, uh, you know, if if you're interested, just you know, subscribe. But if not, then I'll see you on the next one. Or you know, the people who are subscribed, I'll see you guys on the next one. This was Nisho here. Nisho out. Peace.